Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Jesse Warden here. One of my viewers asked to make a video on observables. I'm going to start from the beginning. What is an observable? I'll let my man Paul Taylor give the best definition on his Twitter. He actually pinned it up here at the top. He says, an observable is a function that, when invoked, returns zero to infinity values between now and the end of time. And he specifically includes a sync because these values can be asynchronous. It's not just a normal function. Problem that I have with observables in streams in general is that people who talk about them assume you know a lot of very advanced programming topics, such as immutability versus mutability, side effects versus non, global variables versus local, constants versus let and var, array or list comprehensions, why they're valuable, how to chain them together in a monadic-like fashion. That's a ridiculous amount of amazing functionality and tools at your disposal that you're expected to know so you can then appreciate, oh yes, BaconJS or RxJS and streams and observables are amazing tools. Like that's crazy. We're going to start from the simplest one, which is RxSubjects to give you a nice, you know, wet your toes, but not dive hardcore into the deep end yet. We're install it via Rx. You can use other libraries and Rx is in JavaScript, RxJS, but there's other implementations of Rx in Java and C Sharp and things like PHP, things like that. If you're from another language, go check out those. In our index.html, we are going to include all. So we have every single one of the functions, just like Lodash. It has map and filter and all these other wonderful list comprehensions. We want all of them just to make it simple to use. Our lake, let's change the mouse here. We're going to do mouse move because mouse move sends a ton of events as you move your mouse around very, very quickly. And we want to play with a lot of events to show you the power of observables. We're going to get that event data global. We're going to take the X and Y off the structuring. The X and Y values on this guy, just go ahead and put them in an X and Y variable for us in one line of code instead of two. Thank you very much. To do that, we're going to broadcast it over a subject here or an observable. So we're going to say mouse subject equals new Rx subject. Rx is the namespace. And there's basically two types of variables, those that are immutable and those that are mutable. Subject is my favorite because as a front end guy from a background of, you know, mouse events and keyboard events, which aren't immutable, they could come at any time and in any amount, in any frequency. Subjects are wonderful for that. You still get all the power of observables. They're just not immutable. whoop de doo They have one neat feature wherever you're creating them, the values that you can add to these streams. If you think of subjects or observables as arrays, it makes a lot of sense. So we're going to say on next, and pass in our cloned object here of X and Y. They are just like promises. So these values can only be one value. You can't pass in like X comma Y. Just like the success of a promise or failure of a promise expects one value, so too do observables. So we're gonna go ahead and blast this guy. And to listen to that, it's basically the observer pattern. So you can create a listener and say, hey, mouse subject, tell me when something happens. So we're gonna subscribe just how you on a lake you on for mouse events here we're going to subscribe for events on this guy except we're going to pass in a function for it and say x and y so the first function you pass in is the on next function and this fires every time this sub observable or in this case subject gets a value so we'll log it out to show you what the x and y value is and i think we know what that is it's the object that we click so we basically get an event here and we forward it on to this guy and listen for it here Nothing earth shattering. So we'll do npm start, load it up, show our kizatsu here, and you can see it's already blasting crazy amounts of events. It's an object with an X and Y. It's a clone from our interaction manager, and it does some nutso things. Watch what happens when my mouse goes to the negative, right? We get negative mouse values. In our bread game, we don't want to click and have bread go outside the lake. Good news, ducks would go for it. Bad news, user couldn't see the ducks. That's crazy. Same if you go way over here. You got to, It's bigger than your canvas because your mouse is actually kind of outside the canvas. That's no good. But we can use the same thing we use in Lodash to modify that event stream or those values going to the output of the subscriber before they actually arrive. Let's do the first thing in map and say, hold up. Yo, that X and Y, just like we did in Lodash, let's change the values we're getting. So first, we'll snag off the X and Y, just like we did before, unpackage the event, since we're only allowed one parameter. And say, look, dude, we don't want values that are negative. So let's clamp the values here. We'll say X, yo dog, Lodash, help me out, bro. We'll say clamp, it, on the X values, I, I don't want it any smaller than zero. So just give me zero, I don't want my bread going out there. No need for negative numbers and nothing bigger than my canvas, okay? If my canvas is this big, don't give me anything bigger. So Lodash will clamp that for us, make sure it's no smaller, no bigger. Same thing for the Y. Make sure it's no smaller than zero and no bigger than the height of our canvas here. Then we'll go ahead and return that back and say X is the clamped X. 
So instead of getting any value at once, we're gonna make sure that this X and Y are legit. So now when we save and we print it out, when we go out here, notice it's no bigger than our canvas, okay? Same if we scroll down here and go below the canvas, it's gonna cap out at number 600, fantissimo. Same with negatives, no more negatives, it's gonna be zero. Now that's cool, except here's the problem with that. I actually want values in kind of a border here. So this lake is actually gonna later become a pond when we add some artwork to it. And the ducks are gonna swim in the middle here in a pond, not really a gigantic lake. First create a border here. Let's visualize what a border is in the middle of the lake. I'm gonna make a new shape, not interactive. We're gonna make a border of about 40 and I'm gonna color it yellow. We're just gonna draw the line. So although we're drawing erect, we're just setting the line style. We're not actually creating a fill for it. So it's just gonna draw a line for us. So we can actually visualize what that border is. So we only want mouse clicks, okay? In this case, we're gonna move, but mouse events inside of this border. We do not care about things outside of that. So now that we've got good X and Ys, let's filter to only get the ones we care about. So we can filter the stream even more and say X and Y. Let's unpackage our event yet again. And now let's get legit. So we're gonna filter. It says, look, if the value returns true, I'll include it. If it returns false, I ain't including that value. Good, let's find out what a legit X is. First, a legit X is anything that's greater than or equal to the border size, and as long as the X is less than or equal to whatever our canvas width is, minus what the border size is times two. And a legit Y is basically the same thing, right? As long as it's greater than or equal to the border size, and the Y is less than the app, or in this case, the canvas's height, minus the border size times two. Now we've got a legit X and Y. So when we return this object, we can verify this object's worth listening to. So we'll say const return legit X and, sorry, I thought I was in Python for a moment, legit Y. Although we've mapped good values, we're gonna say, hold up, one more check. Let's just make sure that we're getting values we care about. Now when I hit save, I'm gonna get the values in here, but as soon as I go outside, you get nothing. Notice no values are returned. So we can guarantee that our X and Y are always the type of values we want, right? Within the 40, and then same with the bottom here. We don't get anything down here. That's a simple way you can use observables to kind of modify or enhance events to filter events you want, only the ones you wanna hear about. So in mouse events, maybe I only wanna hear about certain events instead of actually having to make an event for that. But more importantly, I can even map or change the data before it even arrives at these guys. And you can use all the other list comprehensions that are in RxJS, very similar to Lodash, to help control your event flow. So instead of putting all that logic inside of Lake, you can actually do list comprehensions. And later, if you're really cool, you can change these to pure functions and unit test them to help make sure that your actual events are in streams of these events here that you start later to weave together are unit tested and very, very strong is your first step into using observables with a mutable one around subject who's a wonderful dude to start with on user events.